Hello and welcome back. Um, this video is about um, uh, engine break-in and uh, the footage you're going to see was shot yesterday and I'm going to uh, uh, introduce this um, video first uh, so that I can explain a few things. The first thing I want to explain is about the aircraft restraint and uh, uh, in just a few seconds here you're going to get to see the aircraft restraint that I use uh, had it for about seven years and unfortunately it's no longer available. It works very well, I enjoy using it, but it is no longer available. So you will um, see how I uh, hold back the airplane uh, during starting and uh, testing on the ground. The field I'm at uh, doesn't have but one um, stand for, to put an airplane on. We reserve that for uh, airplane repairs and if you want to just start your engine or uh, do an engine break-in like I'm doing, then you use an aircraft restraint of your own and they're always on the ground. So you'll get to see that in uh, just a second and then I'll be back to explain a couple other things. So as you can see from that short video clip, um, the aircraft restraint is made of cast aluminum that has been welded. You got a bar of aluminum that sticks into the ground with a spike in, in the center. And then you got two aluminum tubes that fit over aluminum posts, uh, all heavy duty. And then around the aluminum posts that are sticking up uh, is uh, black. Uh, foam uh, to protect the uh, uh, horizontal stabilizer in the back. But basically it's uh, sort of um, a very heavy duty uh, item, but it, what makes it nice is, is that when you're ready to go you just lift up the two uh, aluminum posts uh, off the um, stand, uh, grab the two black um, uh, rubber things and just lift them up and uh, uh, and you just drive the airplane off. Um, you'll get to see this again when I actually uh, do the first takeoff for the maiden flight. Uh, but I want to explain that uh, restraining the aircraft during an engine break-in is extremely important. Uh, airplane is mounted, I'm sorry, the engine is mounted to the airplane and restraining the aircraft uh, while doing an engine break-in is extremely important. <clears throat> so, um, uh, that's about that's what I wanted to say about aircraft restraints, and I'll be back with a couple of the comments in just a minute. Okay, the next thing you're going to see is the uh, beginning of the engine break-in itself, uh, me starting the aircraft for the first time, and uh, some of the difficulties I had uh, in the start. Um, I started with the uh, needle position as recommended by uh, the manual for the engine uh, OS uh, to start it at two and a half revolutions out the uh, needle and that was actually way too much and what I finally discovered after um, playing with it and uh, some help some, from some of the friends uh, down the flight line um, was uh, that's extremely rich and we ended up uh, um, it being dialed down to less than two turns actually about one and one third turn and uh, so you're going to get to see that uh, in just a minute be right back okay we're at the field and as you can see down the flight line there's lots of guys out here flying testing airplanes and all and I'm here to uh, Test my SIG Cadet um, and do the engine break in. So, this is going to be the engine break in. So, let me get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, engine break in procedure for the, for the uh, OS 46 AX2 is um, to run a full tank through and uh, run it rich. And about every so often, um, lean it up a little and bring it back to rich and run the tank out. So that's what I'm going to do. 
and uh, we'll see how well it works. Now, I'm not going to be able to talk to this because the engine's going to be running. So I'll try to do voiceovers if I can or need to. This will be the first time the engine starts. If it starts. Alright, radio is on. Um, gotta select the right model. is uh, neutral. I'm going to start the airplane. Make sure uh, the ailerons are working, the elevator's working, the rudder's working, the throttle's working. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is try to find where the good idle is process. Although we're going to be running it 100% most of the time. So here we go. was obviously too rich. Start it up again.
Okay, uh, so you've seen that the first part of this engine break-in was a little frustrating for me, um, but uh, when I turned the camera off I sat and thought about it a little and um, realized that uh, what was going on um, was it was too rich and then um, uh, another one of my friends walked over, saw me thinking about it, looking at it, and he asked you know, what the problem was, so he, he helped me out. Um, he said, yeah, he agreed that it was, uh, probably, uh, uh, rich, and, uh, so he helped me got it, get it going, as you'll see in the next, uh, video. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, that first part of it was not recorded, because he and I were talking, and we started it and forgot to turn on the camera. So, once it was running, um, what happened was, we were at two and a quarter... Uh, turns uh, thereabouts and we end up ended up going all the way into one and a quarter turns and then backing back out um, uh, to see how that ran and and it did so we, we um, backed it out to like one and a half that was too much and um, settled on um, the needle being vertical was the right position so it started at about four o'clock. Uh, so one turn was four o'clock again, and then uh, twelve o'clock position for the for the needle um, was like uh, uh, one and a third turns, <clears throat> and that seemed to be just what it needed. So you, what you're going to see next is the remainder of that video. After it was running and running smoothly, I turned it back on, and uh, let it run for a while and you'll hear uh, a third gentleman walked over uh, watching me which is always going to be the case in a, in a flight line like this 
Um, everybody tries to help everybody. Uh, very friendly, and uh, uh, I always appreciate the help uh, because I know when I appreciate it when somebody can Lord help me, and when I see something that I know have some expertise about, <clears throat> uh, I go help them. Um, so we got this going, and you'll see in the next clip uh, the running and the result of of that. So listen carefully because you will hear some of the conversation. Be back in a second. That's what I just thought of. Let's don't let it run dry. Let's go fly. Yeah. You just 
stick around a minute? Sure. Right. Do you, um, you need fuel. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. I know. I need fuel. Do you mind doing me a favor, though? I can. Just hold the camera and watch me fly. Oh. Can you? I'm doing a, I'm, I'm doing a, a YouTube videos. I've got 77 YouTube videos of me building that. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's the end of the uh, break-in procedure. Um, it didn't go exactly as I had thought it would, but uh, it did work fine. One of the things um, I decided, uh, along with a bit of advice from uh, one of the other guys, was that uh, don't run it at 100% too long. 40-50% uh, uh, for the break-in is all you need. You don't want to get it too hot too quickly. So let it build up slowly. Put it up to 100% and pull it back and put it up to 100% pull it back. Pull it back to idle. See if it's idling well. And you can see me doing that in that uh, last uh, five, four or five minute clip. Um, so um, uh, I figured it was, it was broke in well enough. It was hot which is good. It's warmed up, ready to go. So in the next clip, uh, you'll see uh, what there is of the uh, first uh, flight. I'll explain in a minute. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'll explain in the next video.